cubicle losses. We've all heard of it. We've all seen it in movies as that marked moment when the protagonist coughs blood into a tissue. Well, dramatics aside, there's a lot more to TB than the average person understands. In fact, despite modern medicine, we have not been able to nail down TB successfully. So even though news channels worldwide are focusing on the newest disease affecting people all over the world, you know exactly what I'm talking about, we've decided to go in a different direction for our 25th episode and to talk about the oldest recorded disease to affect civilization. Caused by the bacteria Myobacterium tuberculosis, anthropologists have found evidence of this bad boy having been around for nearly 3 million years making it probably the first pathogen to have infected prehistoric man. Today, TB affects about 25% of the world's population. It's a democratic disease in the truest sense of the word, affecting any organ of both animals and humans across all geographic boundaries. Naturally, India, as one of the most populous countries, has an exceptionally high rate of TB infections. Approximately 87% of newly diagnosed TB cases are from the 30 high TB burden countries. Just these eight countries, India, Indonesia, China, the Philippines, Pakistan, Nigeria, Bangladesh, and South Africa account for two-thirds of this burden. Given the scale of impact and the amount of time it's been around, let's take a minute to clear the basics of tuberculosis. TB is, in fact, preventable and curable. It primarily affects the lungs of the patient and can be spread from person to person through air or bodily fluids. One of the factors that makes it quite deadly is that either can be active or latent. Latent refers to when a patient is infected with the TB bacteria but is not yet ill with the disease and cannot transmit it. Patients with a latent disease carry a 5 to 15% lifetime risk of developing active TB. The primary symptoms of active TB, namely cough, fever, night sweats, and weight loss, are usually so mild for several months and so patients avoid seeking treatments, thereby increasing the risk of transmission. According to WHO, the most cost-effective way to stop the spread of TB in communities with a high incidence risk is by curing it. The best treatment regimen for TB is known as DOTS, or Directly Observable Treatment, a course which runs for six to nine months. Recently, WHO has come up with a new regimen that requires the pill count to come down by two-thirds and the duration to three months. This will improve treatment outcomes and adherence and reduce the risk of drug resistance. Interestingly, although a vaccine for COVID-19 was invented within a year, TB, a disease that kills an equal number of people annually, does not have an effective vaccine for adults yet. The only licensed vaccine against TB, BCG, is effective at preventing disseminated disease only in infants, but it reduces in efficacy with age and offers almost negligible protection in adults. Incidentally, this year, we celebrate the centenary of this vaccine. On the positive side, an estimated 60 million lives were saved through TB diagnosis and treatment between 2000 and 2019 alone. Ending the epidemic by 2030 is among the top health targets for the United Nations as part of its Sustainable Development Goals. India has developed a National Strategic Plan for Tuberculosis Elimination 2017-2025 with the help of four strategic pillars, detect, treat, prevent, build. To top it off, given that TB and COVID-19 often manifest with similar symptoms, the government of India has planned a bi-directional screening plan to screen both diseases. So what's in store for better detection and diagnosis? Miral Kamriza, a Harvard junior fellow, designed a portable diagnostic tool that could help identify more cases faster anywhere in the world so as to prevent further spread, get treatment to those in need, and even monitor the effectiveness of said treatment. Researchers at the University of Leicester from UK and the University of Pretoria from South Africa have invented a 3D printed insert that can be attached to a normal face mask and used to identify active or latent TB infection, more effectively than the traditional sputum-based sample. Understandably, the global tuberculosis diagnosis market is projected to reach a market size of over $3.58 billion by 2027. Closer Home, a non-profit in India, is working to combat these difficulties by bringing tuberculosis treatment at a reduced rate to the disadvantaged communities. Co-founded by Dr. Shelley Batra and Sandeep Ahuja in 2006, 
Operation Asha is an organization with a mission to detect, treat, and prevent tuberculosis in India and Cambodia. Operation Asha started out in a single, economically depressed urban area in India and has now expanded to 5,000 slums and villages in six Indian states and six Cambodian provinces. Talking about countries and their programs to combat the disease, Australia clocks one of the lowest TB incidence rates of around five cases per one lakh people and is in a position to potentially eliminate TB altogether from its population. But this was not a war easily won. From the first half of the 20th century, the Australian government took an aggressive stance towards the disease, making it a hard-fought victory over nearly eight decades. In Australia's federal system of government, communicable disease control, including TB control, is managed through a state and territory government-based programs. This differs from the centralized national program seen in many other countries. The hierarchical system in Australia allows for a more grassroots approach to eradication and includes steps like adjustment to its invalid pension policy, allowing TB sufferers to become eligible for the invalid pension while in the early stages of the disease itself. Well, it's time we took constructive action to transform TB eradication from a pipe dream to a reality. I'll leave you with an old adage, experience is the best teacher, be it ours or someone else's. If you've been here since episode one, thank you for being a part of our Silver Jubilee milestone. For those of you joining in later or with this episode, we hope you've enjoyed what GHA brings to your screens. We look forward to seeing you again next week. Stay safe.